it's a bit oxymoronic for us traditionalists who think, oh, a mini, that should mean small, that should mean sporty, that should mean fun, lightweight, and driving focused. That's not the case with minis anymore. Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. And today we've got a quick drive on this 2024 Mini Cooper John Cooper Works. Actually, it might just be Mini John Cooper Works. I always get the names confused on these. The Mini John Cooper Works Hardtop. This is a bit of a swan song to this car because it's going away as you know it here after the 2024 model year. Mini's coming out with an entirely new lineup of models and by 2030, they're going to be entirely electric. So this is actually the last manual transmission Mini that you're likely to ever see. And for some people, that's going to be a disappointment, but for more Mini buyers, I hate to say it, but I think it makes sense. We've driven a lot of minis over the years. We've driven Clubman's, Countryman's, uh, two doors, four doors, John Cooper Works, S, base, electric, and convertibles. And what I've always appreciated about minis is not necessarily their size, not necessarily their driving dynamics, but the uniqueness of them within the market segment. And they can continue to do that and be a unique product without having a manual transmission and more of a, a traditional gasoline drivetrain. So let's go for a little drive. Let's talk about what this is, what this isn't, and what we can expect from Mini over the next few years. By far the coolest thing about this spec is these houndtooth seats. Look at these. <laughs> maybe it's not houndstooth, maybe it's just a, a sort of plaid. I'll have to check the window sticker and see what they're actually considered, but you can hear that it's a, it's a real cloth type material and it looks so funky on top of this sort of tannish metallic color, red roof, black pillars. I, I, after the Beetle went away, it's just the, the Mini was a way to stand out and be unique and, and have fun from a style perspective. And I'm not a very style oriented sort of person, but I just, I love how much Mini is going into this. What do we got here? Cloth, leatherette, light chalk. Is that all it says? Huh, rooftop gray metallic, light chalk. We're dealing with a two liter turbocharged motor making just under 240 horsepower and 230 pound feet of torque. That's not a lot in a, in a sporty performance car these days, especially one that's costing about $44,000 as you're seeing it here. Minis have, of the last five, 10 years or so, have been less about outright performance and driving feel and character and more about uh, almost uh, a entry level luxury experience in a smaller car like this. Because admittedly, a lot of luxury vehicles are large, but if you want kind of a luxurious sort of car without having to deal with all of that vehicle around you, Mini's kind of had your back. And admittedly, that's what I'd like to see out of Mini is not necessarily uh, an adhesion to performance driving cars, but sticking to focusing on offering a unique experience from inside the vehicle. That's what's always stood out to me with minis is they're like nothing else out on the road, even though you do see a lot of parts and, and DNA shared with BMW now that they're owned by the BMW group, that they, it's not like you're just getting in a small BMW. It does feel like a unique product. It looks like a unique product. It turns heads for, for better or for worse. And I hope they can continue to do that as they shift over to electric powertrains. And I'm actually fully confident that they can. If Mini focuses on providing a compelling product at a reasonable price given the feature set inside the vehicle, I know their electric powertrains are going to be good. BMW is doing a really great job in the electric environment these days. I think there can be some really cool Minis that are powered by electricity, still decently fun to drive and provide what's becoming more and more of a bang for the buck because five years ago you used to look at the price tag of a mini and go oh geez that's way too expensive i'm not paying for that but now that everything else has kind of gotten more expensive and mini has sort of stayed with uh with their current pricing really not as crazy anymore i mean geez you can build gti's that cost almost as much as this now we had the opportunity to take a mini convertible it was just an s but a mini convertible s with an automatic transmission on our DM Rally a few years ago. And the other cars that were with us there were the Lexus LC500, a BMW M4 Competition, and a Jaguar F-Type R. So obviously much faster, much more luxurious 
uh, much more driving oriented sort of cars. And yet it was refreshing to get behind the wheel of the Mini from time to time and have a comfortable interior and have a good feature set inside and and something that was just unique. It, it still stood out to us despite all of those other cars that were chocked full of character. The, the Minis managed to have a character to them that isn't reliant on the driving experience. And I think that's important for a lot of people who just don't connect with driving the same way that a, a traditional driving enthusiast may do. I mean, we self-described driving enthusiasts care about certain ways a car steers and brakes and feels and takes corners and responds to your right foot. But as much as we might not like to admit it, there are more people out there who want something different from their car and for a, a car to speak to them and and have character it, they, they rely more on the visual appeal both inside and out they rely on how the technology works for them what sort of lighting inside speaks to them the colors that they can get the seating materials those uh, speak to them those aspects of the car speak to them much more than how it drives and I think Mini gets that in a way that a lot of other brands don't. So as they transition into their next generation of products, they're going to double down on that and they're going to focus more on how does this car fit into somebody's lifestyle who doesn't really care about how a car drives. So it's a bit oxymoronic for us traditionalists who think, oh, a Mini, that should mean small, that should mean sporty, that should mean fun, lightweight, and driving focused. That's not the case with Minis anymore. Alyssa and I have actually considered getting a Mini before, and it's not a manual uh, six-speed JCW hardtop or something like this. It would be a convertible. It would be a, either an S convertible, eight-speed automatic, or one of their Mini electrics, because again, you're getting that electric vehicle that still has a, a cool element of style and, and, and uniqueness to it. Alyssa's really liked that, and I, I think it's cool too. So. I'm not super disappointed that the manual's going away. Between you and me, this manual transmission isn't even really that good. There's a ton of rev hang. You can see if I dial it up into sport mode here, shift into third, and then go to shift to fourth. It takes so long for the revs to drop down. I just got done doing some sporty driving. I'll drop some right here. And you can see between those shifts and, and, and the, the, the sporty driving and driving quick, it's not a powertrain that's responding to me and it's not a steering feel that's responding to me in a way that's giving me positive feedback and encouraging me to drive quickly and to be sporty and have fun. So it's not that this car isn't capable of going quick, it's just not oriented toward that. So I'm not super disappointed that the manual's going away in this car. It, it feels like it's time. I will say it is kind of ironic though that Mini is entirely ditching manuals now because for a while, Mini was one of the only brands that was giving you manual transmissions in all of their models. You could get Countryman, Clubman, uh, two-door, four-door convertible. I mean, Minis were prolific with manuals and interestingly enough, among JCW cars, manual transmission take rate is at 50% even right now here in 2023. So it is kind of funny that Mini is changing course and, and going toward an automatic only future. Again, it makes sense to me, but it is, it is still kind of funny. So the end is near for the manual transmission Mini and maybe Mini as you might think you know it, but I don't think the end is near for Mini in general because as so many uh, cars move, sort of this minimalist look and this sort of different kind of featureless feel. I hope Mini continues to lean into having some uh, some style, some passion, and, and keeping themselves unique and interesting. And in that, I think they offer a really unique product. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see more on some Minis, check the link in the description. We've driven quite a few. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always... Dial on. Mm -hmm.